if it's true that knowledge is power, then this is a powerful book. It contains everything I know about the asylum procedure for refugees in Greece. When I'm working, giving legal advice to refugees face to face or over the phone, this book stays by my side. And the problem is, it's completely unreadable. It's mapped out in line with the neurological web of how my mind works and is, as such, impossible for anyone else to understand. Trust me, people have tried. So, here then, is a small glimpse between the lines about what it is we do here in Greece. All right, so a refugee's journey often begins here, at the police station, unfortunately. They've come across into Greece either by the border, you know, from Turkey via Alin Zandropoli, or they've come to one of the islands like Lesbos or Samos, and they're imprisoned. The moment they're imprisoned, which usually happens, they're given a fingerprint. They take their fingerprints and their prints go on the Eurodoc system, the Europe-wide system. This means, according to the Dublin legislation, the first country which registers a fingerprint of a refugee, that country is responsible for them. So if they go, for example, from here to Greece, they get fingerprinted and then they go to Germany. Germany can find them and in a matter of about two to three months, they can send them back to Greece, sending a take charge request, which the refugee can try to appeal through Yaza. But generally speaking, they'll be sent back to Greece. Well, that's how it works in theory, according to the letter of the law. In reality, however, according to the data that we have, like 97% of people who come to Greece and then leave Greece to go to another European country don't get sent back. Even if they started the application in Greece and, and tried to establish themselves here, they don't generally get sent back via the take charge request back to Greece uh, in reality. Instead, they just start another application okay. in another country. Uh, their fingerprints are kept for 10 years. 18 months is how long it stays in the system until it's erased if you're an illegal immigrant. And once, once an asylum seeker gains citizenship, it's erased, their fingerprints from the system. But otherwise, 10 years is on the system. Now, once they're in the police station, they are given a police note. This note lasts for 30 days. The aim of the note is you take this police note, which claims that you want asylum. You go to the asylum service and then you give this note and you have to queue and you use this, you know, to claim asylum. It expires after 30 days. 30 days, generally speaking. There are cases where police notes are valid for a lot longer, some for less. Uh, Syrian nationals, for example, are given police notes which last for six months. So it depends. But generally what we see are police notes valid for 30 days. It can't be renewed. You take an expired police note and you still have to try and get asylum from there. Now, some people can try to claim asylum immediately in the police station. So they, they go to the police station, they can wait for two to three months in terrible conditions and say that I would like asylum directly. I don't want a police note. I want you to speak to the asylum service and directly give me asylum, which can happen, but we don't advise it because it's dangerous and because we can't always anticipate kind of the, uh, the conditions in the prison, in the jail. And also because once you have the police note, if you have a willingness number especially, it's even better. Did I mention willingness number? Willingness number is the number you're given if you claim that I want asylum while you're in prison. This is the refugee speaking. And if they do, then the police officer is legally obliged to write a special note on their police note, which claims this person wants asylum and should be immediately be given, be immediately registered as an asylum seeker in Greece. Two problems. Number one, asylum seekers, they don't really know about this. Refugees don't know to ask for a willingness number. What is a willingness number? They don't know. There's not that much information. And second, many times the police, they don't listen to this. This is one of the problems that we face. Um, and that's the issue of going to the police station to claim asylum. Abdullah. Unfortunately, though, many people end up in a place like this. They're homeless, they stay in car parks, in train stations without a home. They have a police note, but they don't have any way of using it for asylum. To get asylum, there are two routes, though. The Greek system has two ways in which a person can claim asylum. First one is Skype. But Skype's very difficult. Abdullah? Hey, once again. Skype is a difficult route. Why is it so difficult? It's uh, like a uh, thousand of uh, refugees. They are calling on a short time, limited time. Yeah. About a half hour. So the lucky one will get the answer from the Skype. How long does it take for? It depends. Depends on what? Uh, depends on uh, nationality. So which nationalities get lucky? Uh, Syrians. So Syrians call the number, they call Skype at a certain time and they seem to get asylum. Yes. Some people they call, they don't get it. These are Pakistanis. It seems there's a real problem in the asylum service um, in handling people of different nationalities. Yes. Now that's one route. The other route from Skype is to go to the asylum service. To the asylum service, you wake up early, you queue, and the aim is that you go and you present your police note and they will give you asylum and they'll give you a white card. Now, this is Greece, so obviously it's not as straightforward as that. 
Here on the MIT website, Mobile Info Team website, um, there's information about how the asylum office works, what time to go, where the address is in the different areas in Greece, and the general etiquette of how to take your police note or your documents and wait outside to claim asylum. There are a bunch of problems though, and they are all predicated on the delays it takes, especially in Thessaloniki, to actually get inside. And in that time, asylum seekers have to just wait. It's difficult, but they have to wait until their interviews. Interviews can come up to two, three years after they actually get their, they begin their application. Um, and in that time, they have to find another, something else to do. For example, for example, for example. For example, they'd come to places like this, the abandoned building. Uh, they'd find little pockets of area, urban space, and just try to live because the waiting period for asylum is so long. But for these people, their life, they keep going, they continue. Um, so they come to places like this, the abandoned building. This place is very famous. It used to be kind of full with, with tents and refugees staying here. Abdullah, you stayed here too, yeah? Yes, for six months. Six months? Yeah. What was life like here? It was uh, very, like a bad dream. Yeah? Mm. You had a tent here? Yes. Uh, many, many different uh, cultures were living as well. Uh, they were living in that tent. They uh, ah. were there. Yeah. So like uh, only Pakistanis or Pashto or how? No, 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 uh, different culture. Uh, from uh, Afghans, uh, Pakistanis, Iranis, Morocco, Algerian, yeah, all of them. Kids? Uh, kids as well, family. But uh, this place, like it's not got much cover, you know? Like yeah. uh, like the way the rain can come in and the weather. Yeah, yeah. That was a problem, I imagine. Yeah, in the, we were, I, I was living here in January 2017. Yeah. And it was very cold. The temperature was uh, minus 15 degrees. Wow. So it was snowing? Yeah, of course it's snowing. So during this time, while everyone is waiting, mm -hmm. kind of many organizations, NGOs and charities came in and helped out, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So when you were here, like which organizations were helping you during this period? Yeah, uh, Soul for Kitchen. Oh, for food? Uh, yes, for food. Ah. Uh, food can for the breakfast, and Doc Mobile for medical care. Yeah. They, were, they were all us, uh, supporting us. Yeah. So Doc Mobile came to do medical uh, examinations for the yeah, refugees. Yeah. They do this now as well, it's Yeah, good. as well, yeah. Um, and like clothes, you know, shoes uh, and things? Salt Food Kitchen, they were giving us uh, clothes and blankets, shoes, tents as well. And obviously for legal things, Mobile Info Team, MIT were there as well. Mm, yes. Yeah. Now, question. Yeah. All the people that were here, what was their asylum status? Uh, they were, all of them, they were waiting for the asylum, but they, they had no papers. They had no papers? They were adult people, they were living here. Yeah. yeah, that's the situation. They were all yeah. waiting. None of them had papers. Mm. And that's, this is one place where many of them came. And this is one option that they had. Or they can wait in a camp. Now, the camps to get registered are quite difficult. Um, Thessaloniki generally has a number of camps around the area, as does in different areas in Greece. But to register is really hard. Also, the station, the situation in the camp is not great, Abdullah. What's mm. it like being in a camp? It's like uh, no space. Yeah. So the trailers are full. Uh, the owner of the camp, they say that uh, live where you want, but the hotel is full. So yeah. the, the refugees, they bring a tent with themselves uh, and they are living in the tent inside the camp. Yeah. And, uh, and it's in raining uh, and uh, snow, everyone st uh, still there uh, living in a tent. Now, and people in camps are still part of the mm -hmm. asylum process. They have lawyers in the camp to kind of help them progress their applications, but it does take time. So there are people waiting in the car parks, people waiting in the camps, but the destination is the same. And that's the asylum office. Now, for asylum seekers in Greece, the interview, the main interview in the asylum office is the most important step. This is when it's determined, do they have refugee status or not? Now, if they are successful and they do get a positive decision in this interview, it's only now that they are officially recognised as a refugee, but they have a residence permit. And it's only now that Europe actually acknowledges these people are refugees. But unfortunately, the problems for refugees don't stop once they get recognition. They continue. For more information on what happens next, check out the Mobile Info Team website, the website which has been referred to throughout this video. Go through the links and you can see exactly how the experience, the refugee experience changes and develops over their time in Greece and in Europe.